Now, uh, um, Nigel Farage is making a, a lot of headlines today after that uh, interview with Nick Robinson that saw him once again serve as an apologist for Vladimir Putin. Um, many uh, politicians, James Cleverly, you know, to name but one, lined up to, to, to slate Farage for his comments. Uh, Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell joins me to discuss a former fighter pilot, now military analyst and co-host of the Red Matrix podcast. Good morning to you, Sean. Good morning to you, Matthew. Good morning. Now, what do you make of what Mr Farage was saying last night? Yeah, I mean, firstly, I normally ref- keep myself confined to military matters and don't stray into politics. And this is less about reform, more about some principles. Farage said he, you know, basically said the West provoked the war in Ukraine. And, and by doing that, he effectively justifies Russia's decision to invade, yes. undermines the unity of the West efforts to support Ukraine, trivialises one million casualties and growing of Russia's brutal invasion, millions of civilians displaced and the devastation sort of reeked on Ukrainian communities. He also described Putin as the world leader he most admired yeah. because of the way he controls Russia. Well, the way he controls Russia is he kills his opponents. He's brutal control of the military and, and political personnel, uses the nation's wealth for his own personal gain, and he's sacrificed hundreds of thousands of Russian soldiers to achieve his own place in history. I'm, I don't quite get... And, of course, the real issue here, as you and I both know, it's it's about an election here in the UK... It's attracting a publicity. You know, reform is a startup. He's using the Trump, Trump playbook of just playing, saying outrageous things, gaining headlines, which he has as now. The trouble is on these sorts of issues, Western security relies on political alliances across the West. That's the foundations of Ukraine's ability to withstand Putin. The strength, these statements shake the very foundation of that support. And they are not the actions of a leader destined for high office. They simply expose the motivations of a sort of wannabe politician prepared to do anything selfishly self-serving in the pursuit of power. And I think that's a really worrying trend for our nation. The really worrying trend is the number of people that that lap it all up without criticism or or seeming any historical base. I was listening to people phoning in LBC early this morning saying that NATO was involved in the attacks on Iraq. And uh, and it just... I mean, there, there are... Let, let, let's try trying to see it from Farage's point of view. I suppose the, the argument of EU expansionism and NATO expansionism. I mean, there, there, there is a geographical proximity to Russia, but Putin himself had talked about regaining the territory uh, ceded after Catherine Great had, uh, uh, had taken moved into Ukraine and Crimea. Yeah, but Matthew, we've got to be very careful here because the danger is we suddenly start to play Putin's tune. If if he's worried about NATO approaching the borders of Russia by invading Ukraine, he is moving Russia's borders yes, closer yes. to NATO. So let let let's not beat about the bush here. You know, um, this was all about Russia establishing greatness again, reclaiming lands with a whole load of lies that he's spun to his local population. He hasn't told them the cost of this adventure into Ukraine. And basically, this is all about uh, him. And I, and I think part of this, it, the reason it's really interesting in my perspective is the believers will claim all sorts of wild claims about what they're going to do about taxes and healthcare and whatever. Frankly, that's for the public to decide. But I think the military, I've come from a life of service, you know, where you put service in the country before yourself. And it's hard to watch people trampling on those principles, frankly, on their own personal ambitions, particularly when these wild claims around Russia, you know, this compromises our national security, undermines our efforts to stop Putin. He admires the very dictator who's making the world more dangerous. And it's for others to decide. But as a seasoned military analyst, it's very hard to see that these are attributes that our nation wants to well, for anybody uh, serving in our parliament. I know you as a seasoned military analyst, but the Farage supporters out there now see you as a sort of left-wing conspiracy theorist. Among them. I'm literally reading that, 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 literally calling it, we found a left-wing military analyst. That's what people are saying. It's yeah, extraordinary. <laughs> Matthew, you and I both live in a world where, you know, there's a lot of loud people who shout loudly. And by just by appearing on this show with you, offering a view, I will get pilloried. But the fact is, people have to stand up and talk for what this country stands for. And yeah. when people just shout and make wild, outrageous claims like this, most of the time, you know, they'll, they'll say they're going to double the size of the health service or do that. It's for others to judge whether they can actually do that. But as soon as they start actually messing with our national security, well, they make statements 
that are clearly undermining our whole regional stability, the whole process that keeps us safe. That is really, really worrying, and our nation needs to have a debate about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I can't help but wonder if it was anybody from the Labour Party making such bizarre and outrageous assertions what the uh, the Farage commentators would be saying about that. They'd probably be calling for him to put him, him or her to be put in prison. Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell, indebted to you giving up your time this Saturday morning. 